Good morning, viewers. This is Kasturi Day. Today I'm back with the question answers of the tissue chapter. Of uh, This is according to ICC syllabus class line. So in my last video, I have discussed some uh, questions or the back questions of the book, uh, especially uh, the objective type questions that is true and false, fill in the blanks, and then uh, one word, name the following like that. So uh, in my uh, in this video, I'll uh, discuss some difference between and some short questions. Okay, so uh, to start with, I'll request you to please uh, join my video and do subscribe to get the notification of my next video. And uh, uh, also, if you are liking the video, press the like button, share with your friends so that they can also be benefited from these videos. And also. <coughs> Uh, one more thing that I uh, tell, tell, I'm telling you for the last few videos that please do meditate before studying. That will increase your concentration and also your memory power. Okay, so let me start with the uh, today's uh, discussion. So the first difference between is between a cell and a tissue. The cell. Now the cell is a structural unit. It's the structural and functional unit of the body, of an organism. Okay, and tissue is a group of cells which are uh, which are similar in structure and that function together uh, as a unit, single unit. Okay, that function as a single unit. Then cells are microscopic, where tissues are macroscopic in structure. Then cells are present in unicellular as well as in multicellular organisms, but tissues are only present in multicellular organisms. Only they are present in multicellular organisms. Then next uh, uh, difference is between organ and organism. So organ, organ, uh, it's a multiple tissues which make up an organ. An organism, several organ systems which are constituted by organ, uh, which are constituted by organs that compose the organism. Okay, so what, uh, what is the unit of organism? It is the uh, cell, obviously the cell, but uh, what happens? The cell, uh, some group of cells, they perform a similar function that forms uh, the tissue. Then some group of tissues, they perform a similar function uh, that is an organ and different uh, organs, a group of organs, which are performing a similar function form an organ system and similar organ systems comprise an organ, organism, okay? Different organ systems, they comprise to form an organism. So what happens uh, for uh, forming an organ, different types of organ systems are required to uh, work together. So, and that organ systems are formed by organs that is the thing which uh, here it is mentioned okay then organ they perform functions within the body organism they generally function uh, as an individual entity single individual entity free from everything okay not dependent on each other then organ and organelle difference See, organ, which is, I told you, it's found in multicellular organisms because tissues are found in multicellular organisms, <coughs> excuse me. So uh, uh, comprising of uh, a group of tissues forming a particular function that is uh, an organ. So organ is found in multicellular organisms. Then organelle, organelle is found in an eukaryotic cell. Okay, <coughs> excuse me. Then a eukaryotic cell means a cell which has a well-defined nucleus, okay? Then, uh, and the organelles are what? These are the uh, structures which are present inside the cell and the cell scattered in the cytoplasm. Then, <coughs> excuse me. Uh, this organ may be in external or internal to the body of an organism, like external organs are the skin, okay, the nose, these are external, external organs, whereas internal organs, heart, lungs, uh, kidney, these are all internal organs. Then organelle, they are mostly internal and that is intracellular, inside the cell that is they are found. Okay. <clears throat> then organ, uh, they are performed of tissues which comprise of cells and the cells are again comprised, formed of organelles. 
Okay, now uh, the organelle, each of them is made up of micro and macromolecules. So organ is composed of tissues, tissues composed of cells, cells are formed of organelles. And the organelles are formed of micro and macro molecules. Okay, then <clears throat> organs coordinate to form organ system, while organ system form the body of an organism. Uh, in case of organelles, they coordinate to form the, produce the cell. Okay. Now, example of organs, like I told you, stomach, kidney, skin, and in case of organelle, like mitochondria, nucleus, etc. Okay. Then uh, we come to the difference between an organ and an organ system. Okay, so organ, I told you that several tissues together which are contributing to a specific function inside the body that constitute an organ. <clears throat> but organ system, many organs act together to perform a specific life process, okay, and constitute an organ system. Okay, many organs acting together to perform a specific function, <clears throat> a specific life process or specific function that is forming an organ system. An organ system, uh, uh comprising of uh, or, uh i mean uh many organ systems from former organism okay so here we have uh, the difference between organ and organ system so organs comprising to form a specific function that is known as organ system now the example of organ is stomach organ system is digestive systems nervous system circulatory system like that okay then the cells of parenchyma and parenchyma. Now, the cells of parenchyma are thin-walled and unspecialized. Okay, they are thin-walled and unspecialized, whereas parenchyma cells are thick-walled and they have a lining. Okay, they have a lining. Lining they have. Okay, then they are living cells. Parenchyma cells are living cells. Parenchyma cells are dead cells. Parenchyma cells are very loosely, generally loosely packed with large intercellular spaces in between, between the cells. Whereas parenchyma cells have no intercellular, cell, intercellular spaces between the cells. Okay. <clears throat> Next, the parenchyma cells they store the nutrients and water in the stems and roots. The, what is the function? The cells, these cells, this uh, function, they're these, their storage function. The function is storage of <clears throat> nutrients and water, where in the stems and the roots where they are found, the parenchyma cells are found. And sometimes if they contain the chlorophyll, they can manufacture food also. That time the parenchyma cells are known as chlorenchyma. Then this uh, cholenchyma cells, they provide strength as they are dead cells and they have uh, no intercellular uh, spaces in between them. So uh, they can provide strength to the plant parts. Okay, now uh, example are meristematic tissue, uh, uh, sorry, the next difference is meristematic tissue and permanent tissue. Now the cells of the meristematic tissues, they can divide. So the meristematic tissues are known as dividing cells, uh, dividing tissues and permanent tissues are known as non-dividing tissues because the permanent cells do not, permanent tissues cannot divide. Okay, the cells of the permanent tissues, they cannot divide. The cells of the meristematic tissues are undifferentiated as they are continuously divided, so we cannot differentiate the cells. Uh, but the permanent tissues, they are, they cannot divide. As they cannot divide, they can we can differentiate the different cells of the permanent tissues. Then the cells of the meristematic tissues, they are only of only one type, whereas the cells of the permanent tissue are more than one type. The meristematic tissue cells are living, whereas permanent tissue cells, they may be living or non-living. Okay. Like the living cells are, are parenchyma and non-living cells are sclerenchymas. Okay, the dead cells. Now the cells of the, uh, this meristematic tissues, they contain dense cytoplasm as they're very active in dividing. That's why they, can, they contain a dense cytoplasm. Whereas these, uh, colon, uh, these um, permanent tissues, they may or may not have this cytoplasm because when they become dead, they lose their living component of the cell that is the cytoplasm. Okay, that is when the sclerenchyma cells, they do not have cytoplasm, whereas the parenchyma cells, as they're living, they have 
cytoplasm. Then the cells always have a prominent nucleus of the, the cells of the meristematic tissue. As they're living, their organelles, the nucleus, the cytoplasm, these are very dense. So they have a very prominent nucleus. Whereas this uh, permanent tissues, the some cells are prominent nucleus, while the others do not have a prominent nucleus because some of the cells are dead. They do not have a prominent nucleus, whereas the cells which are living, like the parenchyma cells, they have a prominent nucleus. Now, the cells of the meristematic tissue, the size of the cells is very small with an isodiametric shape or a large and a large lumen. Okay, whereas in this, uh, the permanent uh, tissue cells, they are large in size with variety of shapes and a very narrow or wide lumen. The lumen is very narrow or wide, but here they have a large lumen. This uh, cells of the meristematic tissues, they have a large, uh, large lumen and they have an isodiametric shape and the size of the cell is also small enough. Then the cells of the meristematic tissue, they do not have intercellular spaces as they are compactly arranged. Okay, but this uh, uh, permanent tissues, they are loosely packed in some, while in some they are compactly arranged. Okay, next difference is between sclerenchyma and parenchyma cells. <coughs> now, the cells of the parenchyma, uh, they are found in the <coughs> soft parts of the plant, like the leaves, fruits, etc. parenchyma cells, okay? <laughs> Whereas sclerenchyma cells uh, are found in the mature parts of the plant like uh, the herbaceous perennials and woody plants where they have, the cells are dead, no? That's why they give, they are found generally in the hard parts, okay, mature parts. Then the parenchyma cells, they are not specialized, they're unspecialized, but sclerenchyma cells are specialized. Then parenchyma cells have a thin, cell wall made up of cellulose, whereas the sclerenchyma cells, they have a thick cell wall, thick and rigid cell wall, which is made up of lignin, okay? <clears throat> then sclerenchyma cells are living, whereas sclerenchyma cells are dead at maturity, okay? Now, the difference between cells of involuntary and voluntary muscles, okay? Now, the involuntary muscle cells, muscular cells, they are small and spindle shaped where voluntary cells, uh, voluntary muscular cells are long and cylindrical, okay? So, voluntary muscular cells are long and cylindrical, whereas the involuntary muscle cells are spindle shaped that is tapering of the both the ends, okay? Then, uh, the involuntary muscular cells are uninucleated, whereas voluntary muscular cells are multinucleated. Involuntary muscular cells lack stripes or striations, whereas voluntary muscular cells show stripes and striations. Then involuntary muscular cells are found in the walls of the intestine and <coughs> lining of the blood vessels, whereas uh, voluntary muscular cells are found in the arms, legs, face, and neck. Involuntary muscular cells are generally the cells which are not in our control. And voluntary muscular cells are those cells which are in our control. That's why they are found in the arms or the legs, the face, the neck, where we can, where these muscles are under our control. But the uh, lining of the intestine, the living lining of the blood vessels, these are not in our control. That's why the involuntary, these cells are involuntary in muscular cells, okay? Now, the cells of the fibers of the voluntary muscles and cardiac muscles, fibers of the cardiac muscles. <coughs> now, uh, those cells are these voluntary muscular cells, they are cylindrical and long, whereas cardiac muscular cells are branched and short, okay? Then the fibers of these muscular cells are, uh, this uh, uh, voluntary muscular cells are multinucleated, whereas the fibers of the cardiac muscle cells are uninucleated. Then fibers of the voluntary muscular cells are under our control, whereas the fibers of the cardiac muscular cells are not in our control. Voluntary muscular cells are found in the arms, legs, face, and um, neck, whereas cardiac muscular fibers, uh, fibrous, uh, and the fibers of the cardiac muscular cells are found only in the heart, as the name suggests. Cardiac, cardiac means heart. So it's found in the heart muscles. Next, we come to the difference between epical meristem and <coughs> lateral meristem. Now, the epical meristem is found in the apex of the roots and the stem. As the name suggests, apex, 
Apical means apex. So they are found in the apex of the roots and the stems, whereas lateral meristems are found the sides of the lateral side. So it's found on the sides of the both uh, the roots and the stems. <coughs> then apical meristem gives what? The primary growth in the plants. Okay, it, it helps the plant to grow, uh, grow in height. Okay. And it elongates, uh, it, it helps to form young leaves and elongates the roots and the stems. Whereas lateral meristem, that is responsible for secondary growth in the plant. This apical meristem for primary growth and lateral meristem for secondary growth. So that what it helps it to produce woody axis and provide thickness of the plant. They, it can grow in diameter, that is the thickness of the plant. Then the difference between xylem and phloem. So xylem conducts water and minerals, whereas phloem conducts organic solvents, solutes, sorry, organic solutes uh, or food materials. Then xylem conducts, uh, conduction is from roots to the apical parts of the plant. That is in one direction, unidirection from roots to the apical parts. Whereas phloem conducts, uh, conduction is from leaves to the storage organs or the growing parts of the plant or from storage organs to growing parts of the plant, that is by digression. Okay, from the leaves to the storage organs or growing parts of, of the plant or from storage organs to growing parts. <clears throat> so it is bidirectional. Then conducting channels or uh, tracheary elements are tracheids and vessels for that is conducting uh, it's conducted this um, water is conducted through water and mineral salts these are conducted through uh, tracheary elements that is tracheids and vessels and here it's by sieve tubes phloem the conduction is by sieve tubes then the xylem components are what Four xylem components we know that is tracheids, vessels, xylem parenchyma, xylem fibers. Whereas phloem components are sieve tubes, companion cells, uh, phloem parenchyma, and phloem fibers. Then uh, xylem, uh, only xylem parenchyma is living, and other the three elements are dead. That is xylem parenchyma is living, other that is tracheids, vessels, and xylem fibers, these are dead components. Whereas in phloem, we see that phloem fiber is dead other three components are living here three components are dead one is living in xylem and in phloem only one component in is dead and the three are living that is xylem fiber that is phloem fibers is dead the other component that is sieve tubes companion cells and phloem parenchyma these are living cells okay then xylem provides mechanical strength to the plant parts Whereas uh, phloem, it provide no mechanical function is there by the phloem. Okay, next uh, definition and uh, next differences for between blood and limb. So blood, blood we know it is reddish in color, but limb is colorless. Then blood, uh, it takes part in the circulatory system. It's take part in the circulatory system. It's a part of the circulatory system, whereas limb is a part of the lymphatic system. Then blood contains blood plasma, RBC, WBC, and platelets. Whereas limb contains what? It contains plasma, lymphatic plasma, and a lesser number of WBCs and platelets. No RBC is present in the limb. Then blood can carries oxygen and digested food, whereas limb carries oxygen and <clears throat> undigested food. Okay. Then uh, this, the, it helps in the circulation of the nutrients, hormones, oxygen, carbon dioxide, waste, and the toxins also. Okay. So uh, as this blood contains hemoglobin, which gives coloration to the blood. Okay. So that is, that helps the blood to carry oxygen. Okay, and in this case, it carries carbon dioxide and digested food limb. Then it helps in the body defense system and is a part of the immune system. This lymphatic limb is 
lymph uh, helps in the defense system of the body and it takes parts in the immune system whereas in this blood helps in the circulatory system that is circulation of the nutrients hormones oxygen carbon dioxide waste and the toxins also now this uh, blood consists of proteins calcium and phosphorus whereas lymph contains only proteins okay <coughs> the blood flow fast uh, in the vessels blood vessels whereas lymph ves lymph flows very slowly as compared to the blood then blood when there is a cut then blood can quickly clot due to the presence of more fibrinogen but when there is a cut in the lymphatic vessels then it uh, the clotting is very slow due to the presence of less fibrinogen okay the movement is in the circulatory system whereas uh, in case of blood and for uh, circulatory sorry circulate circular motion is the movement of the blood and the lymph uh, the movement is in single direction then the difference between rbc and wbc it carries oxygen and carbon dioxide this rbc carries carbon oxygen and carbon dioxide through the blood whereas wbc helps the cells of the immune system and they are involved in protecting the body against the infections and diseases okay then rbc possesses hemoglobin and is red in color <coughs> wbc is colorless okay the rbc do not have a nucleus at maturity whereas wbc has a large characteristic nucleus in it okay the lifespan of rbc is 120 days whereas the lifespan of rb uh, wbc is 5 to 20 days okay the rbc is, uh, can scientifically called as erythrocytes whereas wbc can be scientifically called uh, called as leukocytes okay the leukocytes have been spelled in two different ways one is l e u c o c i c y t e s or it can be l e u k o c y t e s okay both are correct now wbc shape is biconcave disc whereas w uh, sorry rbc shape is biconcave disc and wbc shape is irregular okay next uh, the difference between bone and cartilage okay so the bones they have hard inelastic they are hard inelastic and rigid tissue whereas cartilage is sharp soft elastic and flexible tissue okay bones they are hollow compact and have different shapes whereas cartilage are pad like and are transparent okay bones are, have a very hard matrix due to the presence of calcium salts whereas uh, cartilages they have slightly flexible matrix due to the presence of protein called chondrin okay <coughs> the bones cannot be bent the cartilage can be bent easily in uh, certain parts then uh, bones can break and result in fracture if they break they result in fracture but cartilage cannot break as they are flexible uh, then <clears throat> example is radius ulna humerus femur these are bones and in case of cartilage they are found especially in the ear uh, nose then bronchial tubes okay and between the bones long bones we can uh, find also the cartilage next is nervous tissue and nervous system okay <clears throat> one of the four types of tissues which is found in the animals which makes up the body the brain it's made up uh, animal body which is made up by brain spinal cord and nerve these are the nervous sy nerve system i uh, sorry nervous tissue and nervous tissue is the network of nerve cells and nerves which transmits impulses between the parts of the body okay it is the network of nerve cells and the nerves <clears throat> comprising of the brain spinal cord and the neurons which transmits impulses between the parts of the body that is the nervous system total nervous system and the tissue which is comprising this nervous system that is the nervous tissue <clears throat> okay the type of tissue that makes up the nervous system that is the nervous tissue and nervous system is one of the main systems of the body that coordinates the functions okay nervous tissue is made up of nerve cells and some supporting cells that helps the nerve cells nerve cells which supports the nerve cells okay the nervous system is made up of brain spinal cord and nerves 
The nervous tissue consists of three types of nerve cells, unipolar, bipolar, and unipolar nerve cells, multipolar nerve cells, okay? Then uh, these uh, nervous system consist of central and peripheral nervous systems, okay? Next, we come to some short answers, okay? So list the tissues which are found in the heart of the humans. Epithelial tissue, connective tissue, nervous tissue and muscular tissue, okay? Now name any two types of simple permanent plant tissues, simple permanent plant tissues, <clears throat> two types, uh, you can say plant, parenchyma, colenchyma, parenchyma, sclerenchyma, uh, I mean, uh, these three are there, that is plant, parenchyma, colenchyma, and sclerenchyma, <laughs> any of the two you can mention. Then what are the blood platelets? Blood platelets are the cells, cell fragments to, uh, which are present in the plasma of the blood, which helps in the clotting of the blood, okay? Now name the connective tissue that is formed, found uh, between the skin and the muscle, that is the areolar tissue. Name the tissue which is present in the brain, it's the nervous tissue. These are known uh, comprising of the basic, uh, the basic unit of this uh, nervous tissue is the neuron. They name the basic packing tissue of the plants, parenchyma. In which of the simple plant tissue deposition of lignin is found? It is found in this clarenchyma as they are dead cells. So why is cork impervious to gases and water? Cork is impervious to gases and water because uh, it's uh, because of the presence of a chemical substance, suberin. Due to the presence of suberin in uh, the cork, uh, it, it is impervious to gases and water, it cannot absorb gases and water, <coughs> excuse me. Then which uh, body cells provides resistance against infections? White blood cells provide resistance against infections. Which biochemicals compose the solid matrix of the cartilage, proteins and sugars? <coughs> excuse me. Which connective tissue helps in the repair of the tissues? It's the areolar connective tissue helping in repairing of the tissues. Then which connective tissue is specialized for fat storage and acts as a heat insulator? It is the adipose connective tissue. Which muscle has a spindle shaped structure? It's the smooth muscle cells. List any four salient features of the metastomatic tissues. The salient features are the tissues consist of cells which continuously divide to produce new cells. The cells of this tissue lack vacuoles. The cells of this tissue have dense cytoplasm. The cells of this tissue have thin cellulosic cell walls and prominent nuclei. So salient features, it can continuously divide into new cells, <clears throat> lack vacuoles, have dense cytoplasm, prominent nuclei, and a thin wall made up of cellulose, okay? The diagrammatic, so the diagrammatic representation of the location of the lateral and the intercalary meristem of the, in the plant body. <coughs> See, this is the diagrammatic representation. This is the, below the nodes, uh, at the nodes you can find the intercalary meristem and the lateral meristem as at the sides, okay? Next is, what is the difference between chlorenchyma and aerenchyma? Chlorenchyma is the type of uh, parenchyma cells which contain chlorophyll and aerenchyma is a type of parenchyma cells which has large air uh, cavities in it, okay? Now, chlorenchyma performs, helps to perform photosynthesis, whereas aerenchyma helps to provide buoyancy in the aquatic plants generally, okay? Chlorenchyma is present in green parts of the plant, like the leaves, whereas aerenchyma found in aquatic plants, they're like floating leaves of the aquatic plant. Now, what are the roles of the epidermis in plants? So first function is, it is usually made up of a single layer of cells and which gives protection. First is protection. Second, the epidermis may be thicker in some plant parts living in the dry habitats, where uh, uh, or often they are, <clears throat> they uh, secrete a waxy water resistant layer on the south surface known as cutin, which prevents the water loss. Okay, so one is protection 
And if they contain this waxy layer, they secrete waxy layer in the generally in the uh, dry habitats, then they prevent water loss. Third point is the epidermis of the leaves have small pores, that is stomata, which help in the gaseous exchange and transpiration. So uh, due to the, with the help of stomata, which are present in the epidermis, they help in gaseous exchange and also transpiration. Third, fourth point is the epidermal cells of the roots bear root hairs that greatly increase the total absorption surface area of the roots for absorption of water. Okay, so the epidermal cell, cell of the roots, they have root hairs and that helps in the, uh, uh, increase the surface area to, for absorption of water. Okay, so four functions are there. Now write the function of the guard cells of the stomata in the leaf. They help in the gaseous exchange and transpiration. Explain how the bark of the tree is formed. How does it act as a protective tissue? In the older stem, a strip of secondary meristem replaces the epidermis. See, on the stem, what happens? The epidermis is boned out. And that time, what happens? The epidermis is replaced by the secondary meristem. Okay. Now, outside, uh, towards the outside to form a several layered thick tissue. Epidermis is single layered, and that is replaced by secondary meristem, which is of many layers, and it is formed outside layer outside the <coughs> layer, okay. Uh, and this layer is known as cork or bark of the tree. And the cells of the cork or bark, they are dead and they're compactly arranged without any intercellular spaces in them. And they have a chemical known as suberin in their walls and that make them impression, impervious to gases and water. Okay, they have the suberin in their walls and therefore they become impervious to gases and water. And in this way, they have a, uh, they can protect the tissue. They have the, this protective tissue function, act as a protective tissue. Now, what is the function of root nodules? We have heard that some roots, they have, they grow nodules in them, especially the leguminous plants. In the leguminous plants, these root nodules, they have nitrogen fixing bacteria in them. They grow nitrogen fixing bacteria. They help the bacteria, nitrogen fixing bacteria to grow in their nodules. These new bacteria convert atmospheric nitrogen into nitrates, which are very uh, good nutrient for the plants to grow. Okay, so uh, this is the end of my discussion for today. And some a few more questions are left. Uh, some diagrammatic questions are also there. <clears throat> okay. Please go through this short questions uh, uh, because this will help in this type of today's uh, this uh, multiple choice questions. No? This will help you in the uh, uh, memorizing the long questions also. Okay, so follow my video, follow the text videos which are uh, given, which I upload before this question answer videos. Okay, I discuss the chapter also, the whole chapter I, uh, I make a video and also upload first and then I come to the question answer. So go through those videos first and then come to the question answer videos. Please follow my the playlist also. This will uh, contain all the chapters in every classes from seven. I've, uh, I've started from six, uh, but uh, from six, I have not discussed the question answers, only the text videos are there. But from seven, I have discussed uh, this physics, chemistry, and biology. All the three subjects are there. Uh, so please follow these videos that will help you in your studies, okay? And uh, don't forget to subscribe my channel to get the next uh, notification of my next videos. And also uh, press the like button, share with your friends so that they can also be benefited from these videos. And don't forget to meditate before uh, sitting, uh, uh, sitting for the day's studies so that that can help uh, to increase your memory power, increase your concentration. Okay. Thank you. Thank you for watching and have a good day.